Thanks for staying up late with me on TCM. I'm Alicia Malone, and we're continuing our Star of the Month celebration of Robert Mitchum by watching him in an adaptation of a popular stage play. From 1962, directed by Robert Wise, it's Two for the Seesaw. The original play was written by William Gibson and starred Henry Fonda and Anne Bancroft. But when United Artists bought the rights for the play, they decided they wanted the film version to star Paul Newman and Elizabeth Taylor. When that didn't work out, the talk shifted to Shirley MacLaine and Robert Mitchum. Mitchum wasn't so sure about taking on this role. He actually turned it down at first, doubtful that he was up to this acting challenge. Mitchum also suggested several actors who he thought would do a better job, including Gregory Peck, William Holden, Dana Andrews and Henry Fonda. But he was intrigued by the prospect of working with Shirley MacLaine. And then, once Robert Wise signed on to direct, he said yes. This was his second time being directed by Wise, and he had fond memories of their previous film, the western Blood on the Moon from 1948. Later, Mitchum explained this change of mind by saying, I'm not the kind of guy who thinks he knows it all, I can be talked into things. Mitchum plays a lawyer, Jerry, who's going through a messy divorce and arrives in New York to start a new life. McLean is a feisty dancer he meets named Gittle, and the two start a complex and difficult relationship. During filming, Shirley MacLaine and Robert Mitchum, who had a reputation for having affairs with his co-stars despite being married, reportedly started their own romance. Director Robert Wise later said he was oblivious to any affair happening, but noticed how well these two got along that they were constantly joking with each other. It was pretty spicy, Wise said, pretty ribald. I was kind of embarrassed over what they were saying to each other. Let's watch the results from 1962. This is Two for the Seesaw. When Robert Mitchum reflected on Shirley MacLaine after their experience working together in Two for the Seesaw, he said she had so much talent it was embarrassing, quick, responsive, open and honest. Best of all, she had a weird sense of humour. What more could anyone ask? The admiration was mutual, and according to Shirley MacLaine, the romance between them soon moved from the screen to real life, with the two starting an affair that would last for years. Ironically, a lack of romantic chemistry between them and two for the seesaw was one of the negatives that critics pounced on about this film. The reviews of this adaptation of the successful stage play were mixed, with Shirley MacLaine getting most of the praise and Robert Mitchum getting most of the criticism. The reviewer from Newsweek said that Mitchum was rigid as if he were wearing tight shoes. But while the two lead actors didn't get any awards attention, Two for the Seesaw was nominated for two Oscars for Best Cinematography and Best Song. Up next on TCM, Robert Mitchum plays a medical student who marries for money in a 1955 drama directed by Stanley Kramer and also starring Olivia de Havilland and Frank Sinatra. Next on TCM, not as a stranger, then my forbidden past, and later she couldn't say no. TCM can't refuse Robert Mitchum tonight.